Have you heard of a company by name Takata? They had a global market share of 23% for automotive airbags in the year 2007. Virtually all brands of cars use their airbags. Right now, this company is bankrupt. Yes, I'm talking about the infamous airbag scandal which costed this company $23 billion and still counting. My name is Neil. Over 50 million cars have been impacted by this defective airbag issue. When the airbag inflators are deployed, sharp particles such as the ones that come out of a bomb that explodes would get ejected along with the airbag. There were many deaths that were directly linked to this issue. If you go to the root of this issue, it is to do with a low cost propellant which we come to know now that the company has been using since 2000 which resulted in an explosion which blasted the inflator assembly. So the particles from the inflator assembly would come and impact the passengers who are inside the car. So in the sickening, Samsung Note 7, a model that Samsung had high hopes on, had a miserable end when it started bursting during the charging of the batteries. It recalled nearly 2.5 million phones and it costed the company $5.3 billion. Toyota had to recall because their floor mats were getting stuck with the gear and gas pedals resulting in fatal accidents. Nearly 90 deaths were linked directly to this failure mode. It cost Toyota $3.2 billion. There are similar stories from pharma and food sector and they are scarier. For example, the peanut butter that causes fatal illness. Another example is that of NASA's space shuttle Challenger. In 1986, the shuttle took off and it blasted resulting in the death of seven of its astronauts. The root cause of this was associated to an o-ring which could not handle the low temperature when the shuttle goes up in the air. A commission was ordered to investigate and they found out that NASA's organization structure and decision making processes were the key contributing factors to the accident rather than the o-ring itself. In all these cases, you see that the root cause is about some error, some mistake that has escaped from our facility and reached the hands of the customers. So the cost associated with these failures, defects, recalls, etc. is called as cost of poor quality. If not to this scale, I am sure all of us have experienced errors or issues which have impacted us and our organization which could have been prevented when it was in our premise. Well, that would imply that we need to just fortify our processes with enough checks, inspections, quality control, etc. That would help, but it's not going to be robust and a sustainable solution. Moreover, it would cost us to inspect and scrap all the defective parts. As a manufacturing and engineering professional, it would make sense if we can perform a cost benefit analysis of different methods we choose to build the quality in our products so that we can take informed decisions. A quantifiable impact of measures we take to build quality into every product and service will help us as business leaders to appreciate the value addition and ultimately make our products and services deliver higher value to our customers to our businesses and to our shareholders. The concept of cost of poor quality COPQ is an approach to estimate the costs associated with poor quality that would disappear if our systems and processes were perfect. There are elaborate methods associated with this concept to compute the cost. As a quality professional, having a skill like this would be invaluable. 